example one is is a flashback, right? You're going back to your Algebra 2 days. Okay, so they're just trying to illustrate that, you know, we, we've done this kind of thing before. Um, so we have x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 <laughs> minus x plus 1 over x squared minus 1. And just for fun, I'm going to put some parentheses around that stuff up there. I bet we need common denominators, don't we? All right, so n equals 2 over 1. What is this denominator missing that the other one has? X plus 1, top and bottom. What is this denominator missing, top and bottom? <laughs> you forgot what? Why do you keep printing to 514? Did you print to 514? Please. Okay, guys, don't do 514. I print in large print right there on the chalkboard 513, 515, so that you don't print to the classroom 514. I printed it 513. Okay. Byron, your seven copies are going to 513. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, no, I don't, I'm not sure I can handle it. Okay, I did not give myself enough room because what is this denominator missing? <laughs> it's missing both of them. <laughs> yes, weird flexing. Oh. Okay. If you multiply the entire equation, if you multiply the entire equation by, sorry, my parentheses is going to go off screen and then come back. Sorry. If we multiply the entire equation by that denominator x minus 1 times x plus 1, okay? So we're multiplying this, we're multiplying this, we're multiplying this. What happens to all those denominators? Whoosh! Whoosh! Go, right? All right? So this gets rid of all those. All right? I have this weird feeling like I'm doing too much work. Me too. Because we're going to get like X cubes going on here. You know what? We're going to start over. If you want to continue, you know what? Here, I won't start over. I'll just do, yeah, I will. I'll just do it a little bit different way. You remember, sometimes we can do these different ways, and sometimes we can make too much work for ourselves. Okay? What do you see right there in the blue? You see a difference of perfect squares, don't you? Okay, okay, all right. Of course, there's an x minus 1 on the bottom there. And then what do we see right here? The same thing, right? Over x plus 1. Do we see anything that's canceling out? Yeah, we got x minus 1. Write this down. Stop talking. <laughs> okay, now, what does it mean when it says prove the algebraic identity? It's not, it's not the same thing as solve. Solve means you're looking for every value that you can plug in that will make the statement true. That's a different thing. 
Okay, I, I think you're on the right track. We have somebody out there who just exposed your name. I think we're calling so it. Al Qaeda is. ISIS leaves. Al Qaeda is. Serious. Okay. Danger is not something to laugh at. Oh, sure. I'm sure okay. so. There's nothing. <laughs> mm, okay, now. Proving it, he says, showing the steps. Now, if it's an identity, what does that mean? It is already true, folks. We just have to prove that it is. Okay, but we are doing a proof. Okay? All right, now. Okay, okay, folks. You're, you're making too much out of this. Look, we got an X plus one here. This is a minus one, and it's going to get distributed to both of those. What do you get? X squared plus two. You get minus X, right? And then you get a plus one, right? The other side has a two. Anything cancel out on the left side? <gasps> Look, we got two. We proved algebraically. So the first way I was doing this was going to make a mountain of work for no good reason. Getting common denominators and all that jazz. Because we had some very simple uh, elimination or simplification that we could do with the x plus ones and the x minus ones. So we need to prove that the left side equals the right side. Now, I've heard it said from other teachers, and I think this is a good statement. You look to the right side to give you clues to help you know what to do on the left side. We're trying to make this side look like that side. So folks, we already know what the answer is. We have to show it, okay? So they have secants and cosecants, all right? So I'm guessing we probably need to turn these things into sines and cosines. So what are we going to substitute for tangent? Sine x over cosine x. Yes. And then cotangent? Cosine x over sine x. Do they have the same denominator? Nope, so we've got to get common denominators, so the denominators don't have anything in common, therefore what we, must we do? Multiply them together, right. So this one's going to get sine x to the top and the bottom, and this one's going to get cosine x to the top and the bottom. <laughs> Thank you. question just just hold on just hold on you're gonna see some magic happen here in a moment all right okay so we can put all of this over one denominator right sine x cosine x because now we have a common denominator what do you have right here in the circled red part sine squared x what do we have in the circled part over here What is the magic that's happening? One. One. You saw it happen right there, folks, right? The numerator was the Pythagorean identity. Sine x, cosine x. Yeah. Ask your question. Any question on that or you figured it out? Got it? Okay, cool. All right, now, I notice in their answer... They have two separate reciprocal trig functions that are being multiplied together. <laughs> so, folks, what am I going to do with this thing? I'm going to rewrite it. I can do that because it's multiplication. What's the first one? One over sine x. What is it? Cosine x. 
secant, right? It always starts with the opposite letter. 1 over cosine. What is that one? Secant. And so if, I'm going to try to head off your question. If you're going to ask me, is this the same as this one? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Now, if that wasn't your question, ask. What you got? Okay. So we know that from our Pythagorean identity, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. That's our Pythagorean identity. So when we saw sine squared x plus cosine squared x, we knew we could replace that with a 1. Is that what you were getting at? No, that's the 1 over sine x. Okay. So all I was doing is going backwards. So for instance, when we multiply fractions, don't we go straight across the top and straight across the bottom? When you just multiply fractions, right? Like if I took one-half times one-third, we'd, we'd have one-sixth. All I'm doing is pulling it apart. I took, I, I took this part right here and said, let me just... Have you ever, like, seen those videos in biology class where there's, like, one cell and it goes... And it splits into two? What do we call that? Oh, Mitosis? That's what happened right there. Okay? It was together, and then one sine x, one cosine, one over cosine x just... So would the final answer be like... Cosecant x times secant x. See, they tell me the answer right here. Oh, you touch, oh, that's I'm trying to make the left side equal the right side. I already know the answer. I need to know the process of, of what happens in between. It's kind of like if you were watching a basketball game and you know that the score starts out 0-0 and then they, you read in the newspaper, if you guys even know what a newspaper is, that the score was such and such at the end. But you have no idea what happened in the middle. That's kind of what happened there. We just played a game. Okay. Okay. All right, now, do we have common denominators? Stranger danger. Do we have common denominators, yes or no? No. So what are we going to... So what are we going to...